John Volger with Maria Guitar. I'm here with RJ Ronquilio. We are in his studio in Nashville, Tennessee. RJ, thanks for having us, man. Welcome. Glad you're here. Yeah, I uh, love your work. I've been following it forever. Love you. Uh, love your YouTube and love your uh, session stuff. I've heard. I've seen you out live. So great to finally uh, Thank finally you. be Thank hanging you. here. Um, so why don't we start? You've got a, as you can see ton of gear here, but let's just start with a few of your favorite guitars. Yeah, well this one is kind of something that I modded recently. This started out as a, a stock Nash S81, which is kind of their 80 shredder style guitar. It originally yeah. came with an HSH DiMarzio setup. And I wanted to make this like my, my L 80s LA session guitar. So like I'm hugely influenced by Steve Lukather oh. and Dan Huff and Michael Landau. So I wanted to make this kind of that vibey thing. So I actually, I put in a set of the, um, what are these? EMG Steve Lukather set. Oh. Um, which, it came in a, a loaded pick guard which didn't fit this guitar. So oh. I had to do some MacGyvering. I, <laughs> I bought another pick guard. And because it was hardwired into the original pickguard, I had to rewire it basically and, and change the location of things. So I did that. I slapped on a different Floyd Rose tremolo. This is the, uh, the, the Pro series, which I like. It's a little bit low profile. And uh, put some cool FU tone springs and all this fancy stuff. And it's like become one of my favorite retro, retro we say, guitars. Ooh, right. <laughs> Yeah, that's great, man. That, that so did you actually do the the work yourself on that stuff? No. Well, I just did the the electronics. Yeah. That's a but big yeah, deal. I did that's the, a real project. Well, I'm still learning, yeah. you know, and I didn't mess it up. So far it hasn't had any shorts or anything, but yeah. it was probably the more the most involved electronics project that I've done on a guitar. Yeah. God, man, very impressive. Thank you. Yeah. Let's just can you kind of run through those pickups right yeah, quick? I yeah. want to so should we talk about what I'm going through? Because the sound is very distinct, or yeah, well, you know, we'll we'll tease it. Let's just okay. this is a teaser for the amp section coming up. You're gonna love this. Okay, so what are you going through right now? I am just going through this crazy '80s uh, Galleon Kruger 250 ML, which is a solid state amp, and it's got uh, a very interesting overdrive section. Um, then we can talk about it later. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? That is like, now that is, is almost 40 year old technology. Yeah. <laughs> that was definitely, I think this is probably early to mid 80s. Yeah. Oh, but it, crazy. it's got a sound. Oh, it, it's, well, yeah, it sounds killer. In fact, let's hear it right <laughs> now. That is great, and that is so Luke, so uh, so much of that sound. I love it. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's a combination. Like it's a it's a vibe thing, yeah. other than the sound and the tone. Right. For me, it has to have the vibe. Oh yeah. So you know, totally. a pink guitar with a Floyd Rose and, and EMGs. Yeah. Automatically puts me, you know. Oh yeah. In LA in the '80s. So. That is a thing. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Okay. Well, I love it. That's a that's an excellent start. Let's see what's next. Well, guitar wise, let me shut this off. So this rack is where I keep my mostly used guitars for session work and um, my videos. Yeah. So these are the ones I usually grab for certain things. So for strat tones, like I have a lot of strats. Uh, but between strats and tellies, those are the the most common guitars that I have in my collection. Sure. But this is my go-to Strat. This is a, a Jeff Sen uh, Strat, Fullerton Strat, which Jeff is an amazing uh, builder here in Nashville, also an amazing guitarist. And, um, you know, he builds some of the best uh, guitars, especially Fender style guitars. Um, and this one, you know, I just, I fell in love with the neck, which is like a soft V. It's become one of my favorite necks. I actually have another guitar that I measured this and sent it to the, the other builder. And I said, just make this neck. Oh, really? So this is like my favorite neck. And really it's, you know, it's a Strat, so there's nothing much to it, but there's a combination, you know, the wood and the, the electronics, which I think these are uh, a Lawler set. Hmm. This is the uh, Lawler 
Blackface, which I believe they switched the name now to uh, 64, oh. um, and uh, Lawler Specials. So that's like the magic combination of um, the Lawler Strat pickups. And a lot of people compare this to, to Bukovac Strat. It's this, you know, similar colors, similar uh, Lawler pickups, but uh, I think it's a totally different guitar. Jeff was telling me that his is a totally different build, different type of neck, different type of fret wire. Um, and I, on this one, I swapped out the original vintage bridge for this uh, Vega trim. I don't know if you've checked out the Vega. I've stuff. got one. I just put one on my Strat um, it's, I, uh, about a month ago. I love it. Yeah, I've been really digging it because, you know, obviously that I love the Floyd Rose stuff. So yeah. this is kind of like the perfect pairing between like a vintage style trim and kind of like a Floyd Rose vibe, at least with the, the feel. Right. Yeah, that was the interesting thing about me when I made, or about it to me when I made the change is that the tone didn't change. It sounded just like it did before with the stock one, but right. it had the, the stability, the tuning was way better and all that movement up and down. Yeah, and this yeah. feels great. So I've been digging this, I'm keeping it in here. But uh, yeah, this is my, this is my go-to Strat. Yeah. Which I love. Beautiful. Okay, love it. So for my dual humbucker tones, yeah. dare I say LP style tones, uh, I go with this one, which is a, a Joe Nags Kenai Doug Rappaport model, mm -hmm. which I've kind of changed the pickups a little bit. But this, um, I had Nags build, specifically I wanted the lightest uh, single cut style guitar possible because sure. I had a a Les Paul Custom from the like, 1980 Les Paul Custom, which I actually uh, traded to my friend Christian Martucci from Stone Sour, which oh. I, I think you guys de uh, checked out that guitar on his rig rundown. But um, that was super heavy. If yeah. you know those Les Paul Customs are like, oh. you know, concrete blocks. Yeah. So this one I, I wanted because, you know, I was still touring and I wanted something that was light. And this is like, I don't know if you, Feel it. I mean, for oh, shocking. You know, because it looks so substantial, yeah. and it is. This was the lightest body that they had laying around, and I'm like, I'll take it. Yeah. So what have I done to this? I changed the neck pickup out to a slash, a Seymour Duncan slash oh. neck, which is like one of my favorite neck pickup sounds. Sure. Um, and this actually came with a, a Duncan Custom 78 bridge pickup, which is kind of like that early Eddie type of vibe. Yeah. Um, changed out the tuners to these uh, GraphTech ratio tuners. Yeah. Which, you know, love just enhance stability. Like for my touring guitars, I always want them to stay in tune and never break strings. Yeah. So whatever I can do, whether it's putting graphite saddles, this one doesn't have graphite saddles, but graphite saddles and just like getting the tuning right. So between the, the locking tuners, these ratio tuners, and I got this thing called a string butler, yeah, which a I've lot of people those. have been using. And for, you know, three and three headstock designs, this definitely helps, um, at least for what I've noticed on my guitars, uh, this helps with tuning stability because the way that the, the string passes past the, the, the nut, it's a straighter fashion, so less friction. And like, I took this on the road a couple of weeks ago with uh, with Corey Taylor and I didn't have to tune this at all. Oh, great. <laughs> so this has been great. Hey, now what's this magical switch? So this there? is what's special about the, the Doug Rappaport model. This is just like a, a kill switch. Oh, great. So it's master volume, volume tone, and then that's like a kill switch. Okay, 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 okay. Exactly. We gotta hear that thing. Okay. Come on, man. <laughs> Through the GK? Sure. Why not? Well, we'll get, you know what? When we go through the whole amp thing. Sure. Yeah, I just want to hear a little bit of this. Just some taste of it. That's good. Yeah. See, I could never have a switch like that because I would just <laughs> use it all the time. Well, I'll I tell would you, just annoy everybody with When it. I first got this guitar, that's what I was doing. Oh, yeah, I bet. And uh, when you do that on a country gig, you, you <laughs> right. risk losing it. Yeah, you'll play your way out of a gig like that. <laughs> That's great. So I guess next, this is um, one of my, I don't know, mostly requested guitars. Right. This is a custom uh, Novo Cirrus J that's also built here in Nashville by Dennis Fano and his crew. This I got a couple years ago 
uh, right before the, the Summer NAMM show. And um, they were really gracious in building me this custom guitar. And, you know, I did like a behind the scenes video vlog on it on my channel. Yeah. Like the whole design process and building process. Like I would go to their, their factory and watch them cut the wood and sand it and everything. Oh, and right. so it was really cool to see this being made by, you know, the people that work there, who are awesome, by the way. Yeah, um, great company. But yeah, this is... So was this a design that they had that you kind of tweaked for your modified, sort told of, them kind of what you wanted or, or... Yeah, so their Cirrus J model is basically kind of like this offset design. Yeah. Um, I definitely paid more attention to the color scheme more than anything. Right. So we went with this um, kind of Miami Vice type of yeah. uh, color scheme with this, what well, we're, we're calling this Rontilio. So it's like a teal, <laughs> teal and hot oh, pink. That's great. So this, you can't get, you can't get this color scheme. Uh, this is my own private uh, stock great. paint. But um, yeah, um, really gorgeous flame on the neck, oh, which is what beautiful. I wanted. Right. Um, there's something about like a flamed maple neck that makes me want to grab the guitar and play it. So that's yeah. why I'm like, I gotta have, you know, and I don't have a lot of guitars that have flame maple necks, but this one, every time I see it, I just want to grab it. Yeah, that, that, what I love about a, a flame ma maple neck is it's, it's almost like a little secret you and the guitar have, like nobody no else knows. No one can see it, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, It's yeah, like, this exactly. is just for me. Exactly. But yeah, we, um, so custom color scheme, we also had the uh, hardware powder coated white, oh, kind of to match that vibe. Sure. So we got uh, mastery bridge here, uh, powder coated white, uh, which was something special. Uh, the pickups, there's been many different pickups in here. Originally it came with Lawler mini humbuckers, uh, which I dug, but I wanted, like I kind of missed that P90 sound. So I sure. put a set of these uh, Brandon wound uh, P90s, which have been doing great, just kind of has that classic P90 sound that. And I the color like. matched perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta have the white covers. Right. Um, yeah, and in fact, the uh, the original mini humbuckers, we powder coated the the covers white really? too. So it was wow. really, you know, yeah. slick looking. Yeah, I love it. But um, yeah, this has become, you know, kind of a showstopper guitar sure. wherever it's on stage, just because the way the light hits the the. Kind of like a neon pink thing. So yeah. I believe we sourced out this uh, pink plexi. It was kind of clear, and they painted the back white to make it pop out, uh -huh. you know, a lot. So um, this is a very hard color to photograph because, like, I, even on video, you might you might see something different than what I've you seen see it on in video. And it does not look as bad. Yeah, sometimes as this looks like good. orange or red or something, but yeah, in person. I just tell people you got to see it in person. Yeah, it's and different. that flake just yeah. is so great. They do good work over there at Novo. Yeah, yeah, they make great <laughs> guitars. And it's just the, the aesthetic uh, weirdness I, yeah. I love, man. I don't think I've ever seen another guitar with this uh, color scheme, at least with this configuration. Yeah, and that whole George Jetson, <laughs> you know. Cat. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. So that's one of my favorites. Like when Elroy starts a band, that's what, that was what he would play. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Eep, op, orc. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, let, yeah, let's More? keep, let's go, yes, yes. Okay, so this one is really interesting. Um, and I, got a, I get a lot of questions on my YouTube videos about it, because it's so, it's so weird looking. So yeah. this is an RS Guitar Works uh, Twisted Strat. So if you know me, I'm a huge Hendrix fanatic. I've, I've been a Hendrix fanatic since you know, I was a kid. Um, so there was a time where I was buying left-handed guitars just for the vibe. You know, it's not and, just yeah. the, the, the string tension and the tone, but for me, like I said, it's a vibe thing. Sure. So a left-handed guitar definitely has this vibe that it invokes that Hendrix feel. And, um, if you've ever played an upside down guitar, especially an upside down Strat, one of the biggest problems or bummers is having the controls right. up here, as well as like the output jack. So when you're playing, it's really oh, awkward. So awkward. So what the guys at RS Guitar Works have done has, they've solved it. So they've kept the vibe of an upside down Strat, but made it 
more comfortable. So they've actually put a forearm contour where it would normally go in a regular strat. Right. And then they've moved all the controls to the bottom. I love that. And adjusted the pick guard accordingly and everything. So the pickups are still flipped. The, the, the trim is flipped. Headstock is flipped. But it's comfortable to play. And that's huge, man. I think that's the biggest part of it is having that, that yeah. go in the other direction, which to me makes way more sense than the way Right, Strat because it went. makes the high strings mellower and yeah. not super brittle. Yeah, so Fender, listen up. <laughs> Jimmy but, had it right. So this one is actually the, uh, I was talking about my Sen neck profile, which yeah. I love. This is the guitar that has the exact same oh, great. neck profile. And it's a little bit of flame, too. I yeah, if you can oh see yeah, it. beautiful. But... Um, yeah, this is an interesting guitar. I've also put the, uh, the Hendrix gauges on this, so which is a uh, 10 to 38. Ooh. So a 38 on the low E string, wow. which is also tuned down to E flat. So it's super, super slinky. Wow. Um, but yeah, if you want me to plug it in. Yeah, let's hear this thing. So. Let's hear that slinkiness on yeah. there. Yeah. You can really hear that slinkiness. Right. And the um, the third string is super slinky. I forget what this is. This might be like a, a 15 or something. Super wow. light. Is that a big adjustment for your playing when you when you pick that up? The, the string gauges. Yeah. Yes. Not, yeah. not a huge adjustment. I imagine when you hit that. I mean, hit that low E, it's going to just yeah. you definitely have flub to, out. You yeah. Know? You definitely have to adjust your playing a little bit, yeah. but part of the magic of having that thin string is that flub or that yeah. slinkiness that you yeah. can actually right. can hear it. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. So, yeah, this is... Uh, one of my, like I have two Hendrixy guitars, this one, and then I have an actual left-handed Strat, uh, Fender Strat. But this is definitely a, a vibe for sure. So is this, this is their model, right? Yes, this is, you can order yeah. the Twisted model. Okay. They do, uh, you know, the big 70s headstock, maple board. I wanted an early 60s Hendrix vibe, so that's why I yeah. went with Sunburst, Rosewood board, small headstock. Oh, I so, love it, man. Yeah, check them out. They, they make really awesome guitars. Too. Yeah, so weird, so great. Okay, cool. All right, let's, get, let's, get, let's keep it weird. Let's go. Check this one out. So this is one of my newest ones from our friends, Barry, from Grez Guitars, which I know I've, I've demoed a bunch of stuff at Summer Nam yeah. with you guys. Um, and this is his new junior model. This one is the Mendocino Junior which um, as soon as I demoed it, I called him, I'm like, dude, I gotta have this. I gotta, you know, let me buy this from you. Um, and it's just got this resonance, like even without plugging it in. Oh yeah. And it's such, the beauty of it is, is such a simple thing. It's just like a slab body, you know, one pickup, you know, nothing special about it, but the fact that it's just a, a, the perfect marriage of you know, good wood and um, really good um, woodworking skills and guitar building skills and s keep me at simple that it just has that perfect, you know, ring to it. Right. Um, and I, I don't own any other kind of single pickup junior style guitar, so this is the one that I wanted to be my first. I can't remember the, uh, the pickup in this. I want to say wolf tone, but I could be wrong. Sure. Um, but, you know... How about the, the, that wraparound bridge? Is it any kind of compensation, or is it like it, one of those Joe Glazer... It is a compensated bridge. I can't remember uh, who makes it, but you can sort of see... A little something subtle. Yeah, it's very subtle, which makes it look, you know, like a vintage bridge, but it's, you know, it's yeah. compensated. I, I think it might be the Joe Glazer. I know that he, he came he up with one. a really subtle... It looks like, you know, like the original, but it... Yeah. it is shockingly in tune. Yeah. And this sounds dead on, man. Yeah, and it's, um, there's, there's something special about it. You know, it's a super, it's a thinner body than like juniors that I've played, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, you got these walnut knobs, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, it looks great. And uh, the idea, or the story behind this, and a lot of the Grez guitars is his, 
the wood that he sources come from, you know, they're usually reclaimed. They come from old growth redwood because he builds guitars in, you know, I think Sonoma County or whatever. Oh. So all of his guitars are made out of really unique wood. And this one, he said, came from an old wine tank from a vineyard. There. Really? So not a wine barrel, but the actual big tank that they, they used to uh, hold the wine. And that's why, and if you can tell, but the, the back side is darker than the, the front side. Oh. And that's because this is the side that was facing inwards towards the wine. Soaking up those grapes. So oh. you can smell it. It smells like Merlot. Yeah. <laughs> totally does. But I don't know, there's a vibe to it, so, you know, that's why I, I specifically chose this one out, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll and it, I'm sure it covers a different sonic space than yeah. all your other stuff. And the cool thing is, like, for me and a lot of people, for a lot of people, I think uh, with Grez guitars, people associated the, the instruments with being more like that old school, kind of jazzy, old school blues type of stuff. Yeah. And this one rocks like this can yeah. rock out <laughs> yeah, sorry about it tune, but oh. it just has it has balls to it yeah for as simple as it is hey uh, uh, on a side note what strings I, I got the hendrix strings but what strings do you normally run pretty much i'm doing 10 to 46 on most of my guitars yeah um that's kind of my bass line, and then depending on the gig or the, you know, the vibe that I want to get from a guitar, I might switch to as light as nines. I think this, you know, that has nines or nine and a halves. Yeah. Um, but some, I've seen you play like jazz boxes that look like, like a jazz box and kind of like, you know, heavy strings and all that. Oh, yeah, too. yeah. I've definitely put on like heavy flat wand strings on yeah. the jazz guitars. Um, for heavy stuff like down tuned like drop a um i think i've done like a 12 to 60 set sure but uh i i like the daddario nmi xls oh they're amazing right they stay in tune yeah and last a shockingly long time yeah, yeah. luckily i'm not i don't sweat a lot i don't have a lot of i don't yeah. have to change strings a lot oh so a lot of these guitars have <laughs> had a string change in over a year so wow Lucky you. I know. Jeez, yeah. Because with this many guitars, that's a lot of changing. God. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I would need help to uh, change all the Yeah, right, strings. right. So. Well, how yeah. about we look at uh, one more? Sure. Okay, so this one is like probably the only vintage guitar that I own now. Um, this one I actually bought here in Nashville at Carter's. This is a 1964 Gibson Barney Kessel Custom. So the custom has these bow tie inlays, has the bigger um, Super 400 headstock with right. that fancy. It's, it's fancier, basically. Oh, uh, yeah, I love it. And um, I don't know, I, I went there to check out a bunch of jazz guitars. I love playing jazz. Um, but uh, I, want, I demoed a bunch of different jazz guitars, but this was the one that spoke to me. Um, and it's different, you know? You don't really see this as a, a jazz guitar. So it's, it's so amazing that Barney Kessel, who he had two different signatures, you know, or two, or two different brands that did a signature right. on him. I think it was like a... K? Yeah, like a K. I think it was a K and Gibson. And then Gibson, and he never played it. In fact, he must have had some bad blood with Gibson because he, on the, the L5 where he played, he actually covered up Gibson on it. Yeah. Put like tape over it. Yeah, so he never actually played this in public and I don't even know if there's a photo like a promo photo of him with this I think there yeah. might be one yeah but yeah that's the the whole mystique about it is like it's a Barney Kessel that was technically not approved yeah right <laughs> by right. him but you know it's it's made its rounds through like um, you know a lot of rock bands and stuff T-Bone Walker I think also had one for a minute but this has become my jazz guitar I put you know heavy flat wounds I want to say this is like the like LaBella George Benson set or something. Oh, really wow. heavy, heavier yeah. than I've normally played it. So this I've, I've kept as my jazz guitar, but I don't know, it just... Oh, let's hear that thing. Yeah, even th it's through my, uh, my Friedman, but... Mm. 
and so I usually, cool. yeah, I mean, obviously for jazz, I'm always on the neck pickup, but yeah. one day I'll put like nines on this and just like, you know, <laughs> use it as a shredder guitar at yeah, some point. Maybe, or you'll keep those same flat rounds on for okay. years, never change them. Yep, yeah. that's very true. Yeah, once they're there. Yeah, oh, I so, love it, man. Okay, yeah. very cool guitars. Let's uh, jump into amp land. Let's do it. Okay, so uh, you're running several amps. Kind of take us through the whole process here. Sure. So this whole cabinet we call st uh, Tone Hinge, <laughs> um, uh -huh. which was actually custom built by my buddy Danny Young, who's a, a great drummer here in Nashville, and he's a great woodworker as well. So he built this custom for me. Um, so all of my guitar sound is going through, uh, first it's going through this uh, Delisle amp uh, speaker selector, which I, I'm able to wire in four different amps and four different speakers. Um, so all of my amps that you see here, I've got the Friedman, uh, Twin Sister, Steel String Sultan from Amplified Nation, uh, Morgan RCA 35, and then the Sir Pete Thorne 100 watt. I have them all on this dial here so I can just switch between them whenever I want a different That's sound. That's great. Yeah. Um, and for recording purposes and to keep my life simple, I'm just going through a two notes uh, Captor X okay. speaker, SIM, IR loader thing. Um, occasionally I will wire in a, a, a speaker cabinet back there and mic it, yeah. but um, it's a little bit a hassle sometimes. Sure. So, and it's so much easier and it sounds great with the, uh, the to torpedo. So. Um, I'm sorry, the Captor X. But um, yeah, so basically um, this little device has a mute, which is nice. So when I just want to quickly shut everything off, or sure. shut the sound off, I just switch it. So when switching it on, uh, so amp number one is my Friedman uh, Twin Sister, which is kind of what I've been using for Marshall-y yeah. type s sounds. Um, number two, you know what, let's just do a little here? taste test. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, so let's this just... is kind of set to edge of breakup. And if I want a little bit heavier, I have it on a foot switch for the second channel, which is not super high gain, but it's, for me, uh, yeah. gainy enough. Yeah. So let's turn it up great. a little bit more That's cool. yeah so I like having everything on tap just uh, makes my workflow when I'm making videos or, or doing recording sessions so much easier just to be oh. able to like you know and I kind of learned that from from Tim Pierce have you ever seen oh, his, yeah, his yeah. cockpit situation? In fact, I've seen you on that show. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's a great guy. But I definitely got my influence with this setup from, from Tim. Just the way everything was in, is in within um, arm's reach to switch right. things and grab things. Yeah. So That's it. I mean, the, the flow is the right word because it seems like when you have to stop and chase down chords and stuff, it's like all that inspiration is gone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You're out of the zone. Okay, well, cool. Well, Freeman sounds great. Let's let's uh, hear the next one. Yeah. So this is another amp that I've been loving. This is the uh, Steel String Sultan uh, from Amplified Nation. Now he makes kind of Dumble inspired. Obviously, sure. that's uh, a Dumble inspired amp. So this is kind of a low wattage version of the the Steel String Singer vibe. So it's it remains totally clean for the most part. It doesn't really distort, but you know, with single coils, it sounds great, and it's a great uh, clean pedal platform amp. Right. Which, you know, I've I've used different clean amps, but for some reason, the way that the the filtering and the EQing in this amp is compared to other ones that I've had, it just it's like the best clean sound I've ever heard in an amp. Yes. Which I don't have. You know, a lot of my amps are either kind of overdrivey or distorted so I needed like a really nice clean only amp and that's you know what got me yeah it sounds killer so I'll just play some and on your simulator too you can change the kind of 
speaker yeah. configuration? So that's another reason why I got that, because I can have six different uh, speaker cab sims on tap. So if I want something more like a, a Marshall 412 greenback sound, I can switch it. If I want something like a you know, chunky Mesa Boogie yeah. you know, heavy distortion cab, I can switch it. If I want a 112 Tweed Deluxe sound, I can switch it. What a great tool to be able to have that and just right there, just change yeah. really quickly. I mean, ideally, if I had all the money in the world, I would have a studio with all these different uh, cabs plugged in and mic'd up and all these yeah, preamps. But, but even then, even if you had them all, to switch from one to the other, you still got to yeah. manually do it, yeah. right? So it makes yeah. my life a lot easier. That's what yeah. all this is all about is how to make my life easier. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So, okay. Yeah, so that's that one. These are actually not plugged in right now, but um, this, I mean, we can talk about this one, the, the PT100. Yeah, yeah. This was my main uh, amp when I was doing a lot of my video work, you know, in the, when I first moved to town. This was, you know, this was in that spot, and that was yeah. like, it had my clean channel, it had my, my dirty channel. Um, so this has been with me for a long time and you know I, I have no plans on getting rid of it but um you know this is a it kind of put me on the map as a as a youtuber oh that's great because if you look at all my videos and my video descriptions it's always this it was always this amp yeah for the longest time yeah i've i've, I've heard you on that amp yeah it sounds great uh and then this one the morgan rca 35 was my main touring amp for, gosh, five or six years. Yeah, I. You know what? I um, I did. I was. A, I, I saw you at Thompson Square. We were on the same bill. I can't remember who I was playing with, but and you had that. Yeah. Email with them. They used to be much cleaner. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, there's probably some dead mosquitoes in the back still. Yeah. But um, I had a matching cab. Actually, I got this um, from Joe Morgan. We were both still living in, in Southern California at the time. So I would drive over to his shop, um, and uh, he made this for me, and I took it on the road. Uh, 2013 was the first time I took it on the road. Uh, and then when I moved to town, when I moved to Nashville, this was the only amp that I toured with. Partially because it's such a, A, it's a great sounding amp. B, it never failed me. Yeah. And C, I had cases for right. it. Right, cases so are the, like, that's the thing, yeah. yeah. So when you make that change, like, oh, I gotta get cases yeah 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 so, well, that's great yeah and then although you've got a ton of amps here this one you opened with this gk talk about this a little bit so this is the newest baby to the collection um a lot of people might have seen uh, a video i did for the old school Scholz rockman headphone amp um, and i was heavily into the def leopard hysteria album and a friend of mine uh, told me that um, other than the Rockman, Def Leppard also used this practice amp. This is basically a practice amp, but they used uh, a GK 250 ML practice amp to record some of the guitar parts. Uh, and I just got this. I bought this on Reverb like last week. And I have to say that I, I definitely can hear it. I mean, we played it at the beginning. Yeah. But um, it sounded amazing. It almost feels like a it's different than the rockman but it has that same kind of nasally character in the overdrive section and it's got you know stereo chorus and echo just like a rockman right so i kind of feel like this is like a, a the amp version of a rockman a practice amp version of the rockman yeah um, see so, I'm, I'm kind of reluctant to even bring this up because now i kind of want one and i know that as soon as this video comes out people are going to be snapping them up and the price will go up so Maybe I can buy one before this airs and then sell it all to you when, uh, when you guys want it. Yeah, this is definitely magical, you know, because it's, it's solid state. Yeah. Um, but there's photos of, like, Eddie Van Halen using this backstage, um, just warming it up. Warming right. Up. Um, I've heard Iron Maiden recorded with this. I've heard Rush recorded with this. With this, a practice amp, yeah. you know? And... Uh, likely, like um, how I have it wired in, I'm not using this, this, the speakers in the front. These but why speakers. not? Those, uh, <laughs> those tiny speakers have so they much must character. Yeah. yeah. But 
you know, you can plug mm -hmm. in external speakers. There's also a direct out. I haven't tried that yet, but oh, you don't you know, want to. Go <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't I want. trust you. Yeah, yeah, you don't want that. But you know, this is like you know, a magical piece. Not a lot of people own this still, maybe. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I, I, I got rid of mine 30 years ago. You want to buy this? Uh, well, <laughs> I want to find a really cheap one, and, and yeah. That's great, man. Yeah, this is special. I love it. Isn't it cool how gear comes around like that? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like all this, you know, semi-fancy gear, and then I have yeah, a pra yeah. practice amp propped yeah, up on top. Yeah, Plus, I have, up. I don't know if you saw this, old uh, school uh, Rockman distortion generator. God, I know. You know what, though? I mean, like, when Tom Schultz came out, nobody sounded like that. And the only way he got that sound was by using his engineering skills to make sure. it happen. Still to this day, nothing sounds like nothing. a Rockman. Yeah, um, yeah, they're great. So special. Uh, okay, very cool. <laughs> now, so this is a good segue into the pedal, uh, pedal talk. Yes. We got a lot of stuff here. Okay. okay I'm not gonna kid you, a lot of, <laughs> lot of, there's pedals everywhere, but let's just kind of focus on, I guess, so I imagine you have your, your, your big gigs, pedal board you have your small club pedal board you have your studio stuff yeah so i mean right now i'm not really gigging that much occasionally i'll 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 do some touring stuff but i'll just bring a basic board yeah the focus on this for me was more of like this is my studio slash you know video studio sure board so i can access a, a ton of effects so uh me and my subscribers have dubbed this the smorgasbord, oh, yes. which is like um, basically one, two, four or five different pedal boards strung, you know, string together. Um, so right now I go right from my guitar into a wah pedal, which I'm using the Jam Waco, yeah. which looks badass, but it also sounds ridiculously awesome. Um, I've never th thought I would fall in love with a wah pedal, but for some reason there's something about this one. See the wah pedal is almost like that kill switch on your nags. It's like when I put one in line, I just use it too much. <laughs> yeah, that's great yeah. though. So um, from the wah pedal, I go kind of through like a Hendrixy um, pedal situation. So I got the wah pedal, then I have my, my Univibe, which is a Sabadius funky vibe, which to me sounds, you know, amazing. I haven't really played a, a vintage Univibe, so I can't say I c it sounds exactly like it, but when I hear that Hendrix Univibe sound, that's what's, what it sounds like. Yeah. So um, that's really cool because that has like an onboard preamp, kind of like the original. So sometimes I'll just flip on the preamp and not the, the vibe oh, sure. effect, just to add a little you know, character to it. So from there, then it goes into pedal board number one, which is my fuzz board, because I don't like, I like to have my fuzzes as close to my guitar signal as possible, just to... Sure. Know, they're very fickle, especially germanium fuzzes. Yeah. So this one I switch out temporary, you know, from time to time, so it, it changes, but right now I'm going through... Um, each fuzz is actually wired through a switcher, so they don't interact with each other because, you know, fuzzes are fickle. Yeah. So in the first uh, line I have a Jesse Davey, uh, King Tone Germanium Fuzz, which is right now like my favorite Germanium Fuzz. Uh, you can adjust the bias on it. Um, there's a little uh, three-way switch to get a different kind of uh, EQing, uh, which is really awesome if you switch between a Strat and like a Les Paul style guitar. Um, so that's my favorite right now. In, in the second switch, I have this custom um, West Jeans Texas Fuzz Fuzz Face. So that's like Custom colored, yeah. you know, you got the, the teal and the pink. And oh, then God, that's pink on the so bottom. great. Um, that's a really awesome silicon fuzz, uh, fuzz face style, you know, traditional uh, sounding. Um, and he does great work. I think he does a lot of mods to fuzz faces as well. Badass player as well. So that's in my second line. In my third loop, I've got this Expresso FX Fuzz Bender Mark I. So that's kind of like the early fuzz face sound, you know? Uh, when I bought that, I was heavily into uh, Mick Ronson 
David Bowie Spiders sure. from Mars sound. Yeah. So that's why I bought it. Um, and that's just a different color than a regular fuzz face. It's got a different vibe to it. Um, so that's number three. And then uh, in my fourth, in my last st uh, loop, I have a Renin Cuff Box of War, which is like a, a Big Muff style pedal, which, you know, I like fuzz faces and I like Big Muffs. That's yeah. my favorite types of fuzzes. Um, and from there, I actually go into this J-Rocket 45 because what I've found with fuzz pedals is they sound the best to me through kind of a dirty amp or like, you know, a not totally clean amp. Yeah. So that actually kind of emulates like a JTM 45 Marshall. Oh, okay. So if I'm going, let's say, into my super clean Amplified yeah. Nation, I'll put that on and it smooths out the fuzz a little bit hey, and makes it sound. Let's hear that a little yeah. bit. Let's hear, uh, let's hear the, the whole taste test. Well, this is such a clever way to do it because, I mean, I, I don't know, I change pedals, but what I usually do is take one off and put one in, but this way you can leave everything in and do a taste test. I think that's why go. I built it was, uh, I think I might have done a video where I was just comparing the different fuzz pedals. And in fact, when I first built this, it was all fuzz faces. Oh, I think there was yeah. like six different fuzz faces on yeah. there. You know, you need a big board for, for six fuzz yeah, faces. Yeah. That's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. But uh, if you want to hear yeah, the first yeah. one, here is the, um, here's my sort of clean sound going sure. through the, the Friedman. Um, here is the uh, King Tone fuzz, Germanium fuzz. about fuzz face style pedals is you you know Hendrix did this a lot is you roll off the volume and it should clean up pretty nice right. yeah that's which is so what cool. I love probably why I love them so much because they're very um, you know responsive to your volume knob and your playing and everything right so that's uh, the germanium fuzz now switching over to the West Jeans. And a little trick that I learned from James, a James Santiago video, uh, I think with the silicon fuzz faces, is there's a sweet spot on the fuzz knob. Um, you don't want to crank it all the way, you just want to back it off a little bit, and you'll hear the difference, like here. So this is cranked, and then when I back it off, you can hear it kind of get in that sweet spot. Like right there. Right. Where it's, it, it kind of tames down that sizzle, sizzle, yeah. sizzliness of a silicon fuzz. It sounds like it's going to blow up, but it's not yeah. blowing up yet. Right. Where it's sizzling, then it's blowing up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of the sweet spot I found with like silicon fuzz faces. But... And for, to me, like the difference between germanium and silicon is, you know, the, the silicon has a little bit of high-end sizzleness, sizzliness, it's a hard word, uh, and the germanium is a little bit fuller sounding, a little tamer on the top end. Yeah, that, that, that sounds right. So, I mean, we can A-B the two. It's very similar, similar yeah. the way they're said. Yeah, it's interesting. High frequency there. Right. Uh, moving on to the fuzz bender, which is, like I said, an, uh, the early version of the fuzz face, I guess. It's a little uh, like it's going to blow up more. Yeah. Know? It's not as refined, maybe. Yeah. Which are you using on this? So this is the uh, one control iguana tail loop. So it's a five, is it five? It's a five loop switcher. Uh, super basic. Um, it's 
pretty cool because it has uh, the capability to, to run power to different pedals. If you, oh. If you need a power supply. Wow, that's great. So and is that what's powering these? Uh, yes. Oh, that's great. So there's one uh, power plug going into here, and then there's different uh, power cables going to the... Man, that is Actually, such... you know what? So with fuzz pedals, I don't like to use... Batteries? Are you on batteries? Yeah, they're all on batteries except for the... the uh, run and cuff. Big that cuff. is funny about fuzzes and batteries, right? Yeah. So it, that's why I have them all unplugged when I'm not yeah, using them. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing about the Espresso is that there is a switch that you can shut off the battery. Oh. So there's actually, I don't know if you can see, but I have like that's a little a great idea. battery underneath there and you just switch it off when uh, you're not using it so you don't have to keep on unplugging it. Oh, that's great. That's great. So, so from there, you want to move on to the yeah 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 we'll hear a little muff. taste test sure so this is actually the big muff going into the the J the J Rocket forty five caliber so different character altogether yeah compared to a fuzz face I just. Those are my two favorite fuzz styles. Right. So I like to have them on tap whenever I, you know, just click. Yeah. Back and forth. What a great way to do it. Okay. So fuzz, fuzz is covered. You yeah. got the fuzz. So that's my my front end. I go through, like I said, kind of this Hendrixy pedal chain, and from there, I go into this uh, Boss multi-pedal switcher. Sure. Which some people use it to switch different pedals. Yeah. I use it to switch different pedal boards. Huh. So I've got, right now I have three other pedal boards wired into it, which I can switch on and off at any moment. Uh, the main one, which is I believe the last in the, in the chain, is this, uh, is the big board that I built with uh, Mason from Vertex FX. Um, and that's kind of like my, my kitchen sink board that yeah. has a little bit of okay, everything take, that take I need. Take us through that. Sure. So this has um, changed a little bit since we first built it. I've added and subtracted some pedals, but right As now... As you do. Yeah. Yeah. Which I told him, like, I need something that's going to be semi-permanent because I know I'm going to be ripping off pedals and stuff. So, you know, you get strong when you have to rip off dual lock. Yeah, right. <laughs> but right. Um, um, So tuner, obviously. Um, then I'm going into this uh, Digitech drop pedal, which is the secret... Nashville pedal uh, if you want to bring one guitar and be able to do you know half step down right. or even baritone yeah I brought that on gigs where I had to do like a baritone part and just like, switched it on I got like, it yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's perfect for that um, and then you know what I can't remember <laughs> where I'm going through this um, and I believe from there I go into this dry bell unit 67 which is kind of like a boost preamp. And this also has a little bit of compression. So sometimes I'll switch that on if I want to use a compressor at the beginning of my, my sound or tweak the EQ of my sound. Sure. Um, just something, you know, simple. Uh, and then from there I have a, a, another Jesse Davey pedal. That's the King Tone Octoland, which is my Octavia style pedal, which I really like. There's a lot of uh, uh, tweakability options with that. Um, so it's an Octavia pedal, but it can do a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, I go into another fuzz pedal, which is the Analog Man Sunface, which is another fuzz face style pedal. Um, I, I just got to have fuzzes you, everywhere. <laughs> you love the fuzz. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Yeah. So that's kind of like another flavor. Um, I just chose to put it on the main board because... You know, if I want to take this board out on a gig or whatever, I just have yeah. fuzz already there. So that's on there. Um, and then I got a bunch of overdrive distortion pedals, um, starting with this Pogo uh, Zenray, which is kind of influenced by the uh, the old Hermida Zen Drive. Sure. You know, the, um, I think Love Pedal makes it now. Yeah. But uh, it's got that Robin 40... Dumbly Overdrive. Sure, I, I remember that pedal. Yeah. So I go through that. I go through the 
the Nashville standard issue Nobles ODR one. Right, that Just is. To, you got to have that pedal. It's like yeah. for clean, overdriven power chords or something. It's nothing like it. And from there, I go into another thing, which is my my um, signature three-in-one pedal from Mythos Pedals. This is the Sus Mariosip pedal. It came out a couple years ago oh, cool. at the NAMM show. It's basically a clean boost uh, overdrive, which is based on the, the Mythos Herculean overdrive, which I really like, kind of like a low mid-gain overdrive. And then I go into this analog echo circuit, which I have set for like um, slapback rockabilly tone, which is kind of... I wouldn't call it my signature sound, but that's uh, a sound that I gravitate towards a lot. Yeah. So then the last distortion in the chain is this LPD-87, which is kind of like my Marshall JCM-800 in a box. So if I want to go metal without switching to another amp or whatever, or if I'm on a gig and I have like a twin reverb, I can make it sound like a Marshall with that pedal. It's, and I, actually, I use that... Uh, on the road with Corey Taylor not too long ago, and it, it sounded great, you know? It worked fine. And from there, uh, we got the Vertex Boost, which I also have hooked up to um, an expression pedal so I can use it like a volume pedal. That is such a great feature, that pedal. Yeah, that's it, never leaving the board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the two, it's really the two in one. Yeah, yeah. that's great. So I, I use that as well as for like a little volume boost or a solo boost. Um, and then from there, I have a couple modulation effects. Uh, first one is this GFI synesthesia, which is kind of like a multi-effect. So I have, you know, tremolos and vibratos and choruses and everything all in that pedal, yeah. um, which I don't use a ton of, but I like to have them all in one thing. So I don't. You kind of got to got to yeah. got to have them. Maybe never use them, but you, yeah, exactly. But when you don't have it, they will ask for it. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you have to be ready. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of people have like. The Eventide stuff, which I used to have an Eventide as well. Um, Source Audio makes a good one too. But I've been loving that GFI synesthesia, and it fits really nicely in that space yeah, too. Yeah, right. So that's another thing like about designing pedal yeah. boards for me. A lot of it is the size of a pedal and the weight of a pedal can depend on, you know, can decide what's going on my board. Yeah. You know, especially if you deal with fly dates and stuff. Yeah. So. So from there, I, I just demoed that Jam Pedals Harmonious Monk, which I is, love that name, man. Yeah. It's so great. It's, there's such cool pedals, you know? Um, and it's got this um, harmonic tremolo that, that I really like, and that's how I have it set. But it's also just a quick, you know, if I need a, a trem sound, I'll just hit that one. Yeah. Instead of going into the GFI to find one, that's just easy to set. Um, and from there, I go into you know, my, my surf reverb, my fake surf reverb, which is the, uh, the Boss FRV1, which is discontinued now. Sure. But to me and to a lot of surf guitar enthusiasts, that's like one of the closest pedals that comes to, you know, the real Fender right, surf, right. Uh, reverb tank. Isn't that funny? It's like the greatest pedals that they don't companies make. stop making. I wonder if it's because they can't get the parts anymore or, or what? Quite possibly. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if you can find one, I would definitely suggest buying one yeah. if you find it. So all of that stuff, that's my, the main board, that's going into the, the boss switcher. So I can bypass it totally if I want to and just go straight into the, the front of the amp, which is awesome because, you know, all this cabling right. can degrade your signal. So I do oh. have buffers in certain places just to... Uh, to help lift up the signal a little bit. Well, that's what's really impressive about this, because although you're running all this gear, because you have them run through, because you're taking them out of the, the signal flow, yeah. they're, it's, they're literally not even there. Yeah, this is why I kind of designed it that way, because um, at one point I probably had every pedal board running through each other, and like when you compare oh. that sound to going straight into the amp, it's just like night and day. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time rewiring using different cabling cutting to length adding buffers in certain places it so, is dialed in now, yeah man. i spent too much time yeah yeah too much precious time of my life to doing that but it's dialed in and and i have no complaints so 
That's the main board. And then I have two kind of satellite boards on both sides of me, a right side and left side, which is ever changing as well. Sure. Um, so on my right side, I've got this uh, Voodoo Labs Micro Vibe Full Tone Ultimate Octave. Um, another Jesse Davy King Tone pedal, the Duelist, which is great with strats. Um, this MXR FET driver, which I bought to kind of emulate that um, Chandler 2 driver kind of yeah. um, Eric Johnson-y thing. And then I have another uh, Lawrence Petros LPD pedals, the 74, which is, uh, you know, on my main board I had the 87, which invoked like an 80s Marshall. That invokes more like a 70s Plexi oh. Marshall. So nothing, I mean, there was no thought really behind this board other than like, I like the combination of these two together, the, 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 micro the micro vibe and the ultimate octave. Let me yeah. demo it for you. Uh, it just has a thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is not cool. quite Hendrixy, but it's something close different. enough. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, kind of like this board I designed specifically with a Strat in mind. Um, but like I said, it's always changing. Uh, and then on the left side is you know just a bunch of stuff I threw on there as For well. Sure. I've got a, a Mythos, a Joey Landreth High Road Fuzz, oh, which cool. is a cool single knob fuzz. I've got this new uh, Vespa, uh, sorry, the Btronics Vespa, which is like a custom one. They put, you know, all the people's names on the bottom. Oh, that's great. Um, that sounds crazy. Uh, this Cornerstone Gladio, which is another kind of Dumble style Robin 40 pedal, as well as two Vertex Ultraphonics overdrives. One is the, the regular and then one is the HRM. Um, just for a different vibe. Like half of it is like this Robin Ford feel and then some of it is just a bunch of weird fuzz stuff. Yeah, that's great. Is... And, and you were saying, and you're getting delays after your, your uh, speaker sitting. Yeah, right? so, um, you know, for the longest time I was just using like the, the plugins on my computer yeah. to, to do like reverb and delay, but I wanted to use my, my pedal, which is, I have a Source Audio Nemesis Delay, which is a great pedal. I've yeah. used it on tour. But um, I bought this device from Revival Electronics. Oh, sorry, Revival Electric. Um, and they make this device that you can plug in a, a microphone, like an XLR, into it and use your regular guitar uh, pedals with, oh. with a... Uh, your vocal mic, but what? I thought, what what if I take the XLR out of my Captor X into that, wire in delays and reverbs, so it's treating, it's uh, the the delays and the reverbs are coming after my cab sound, right. my mic'd cab sound, which is how you would do it in the studio. That's a great way to do it. I'm able to use um, the pedal with it, which is cool because you know I can just reach down and tweak it instead of getting my mouse out and yeah. going through all the 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 windows too uh, and it's to a great it. sound oh yeah yeah so as wow. of now well as of a couple weeks ago everything was dialed in but you know i've been working on it for oh. a couple couple years i guess trying to get everything the way i want it dude it is dialed in it's really inspiring thank you yeah and um i don't know what's next maybe some nice preamps or outboard gear i don't know it's yeah, never ending well, yeah it, it is never ending so RJ, thanks so much for having us over. I've, like I said, I've seen you live. I've seen you on YouTube. It's great to see the other side of it right here in person. It is so impressive the way you've put this all together and God, it sounds amazing. And your playing is killer. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming over. Yeah. Okay. Till next time, subscribe. <laughs>